Hello, it's Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and Ink Nouveau, and I have a pretty exciting pen for you here today. I have the Pilot Metropolitan. It's a new pen that's come into the US, uh, and I think it's going to be one of the best starter pens out there uh, for, fountain, for new fountain pen people and existing fountain pen fans. Um, typically, it's been like the Platinum Preppy, maybe the Kuwaiko Classic Sport, or um, the Lamy Safari is another kind of uh, classic starter pen. Uh, but this one, it's, it's a $15 pen, at least as of the making of this video. It comes with a converter, and it's a nice solid pen, smooth, flows well, writes well, attractive, well balanced. It's just overall just a very exciting pen. So I'm really eager to review this one, show the world what it's all about, and introduce what I think is going to become known as one of the best starter pens out there in the fountain pen community. So here is the Pilot Metropolitan. Pilot Metropolitan, even though it's a relatively inexpensive pen, actually comes in the same box as the Pilot Prera. Here is the information there, my proof, Metropolitan. Uh, you know, it's a decent box. It's pretty sturdy. I mean, it's you know, not the nicest case in the world, but what do you expect really for a pen this price? Uh, inside the box is the pen, uh, an insert that comes out and reveals absolutely nothing. It's got nothing to hide. And then a converter, uh, sorry, cartridge. It's got a cartridge in there. I always mix up cartridge and converter. It's a, it's a disorder I have. Um, it's, a, it's a proprietary Pilot Namiki cartridge. Um, and then when you open up the pen, it, uh, you know, it's got your typical nib situation, but it actually comes with a converter. More on that in a second. So the Metropolitan, it's a metal pen, and it uh, comes in three different colors at the moment in three different styles. So here they all are. They come in a zigzag, a dot, and a plain pattern. And I'll show you the black because it's easiest to see these patterns on the black. So the only difference is the pattern that's on the band. So here's the zigzag. It's kind of like all these little squares and stuff. The dot and then the plane. So it's kind of nice, classy. It's very, uh, you know, kind of, oh, I don't know. Just a, a, you know, good, classy, normal looking pen. It's not too extreme, but it's not too boring. It's, it's got some interesting things going on with it. Uh, gold, black, and silver are your color options. And, uh, you know, pretty straightforward. So um, I want to uh, talk about this converter here for a second because most pens in this price range do not come with a converter. And the one that this comes with uh, is kind of an interesting converter. I actually don't even know what it's technically called. I'll call it the cleaning converter because it's the same converter, the same squeeze converter that comes with the Pilot Parallels, but on the Parallel, it's used only for cleaning. Now, the reason is because it doesn't really fit snugly onto the parallel body, uh, but it does fit snugly onto the Metropolitan. So, and if you also have an older Pilot Knight, which is no longer brought into the US, it's the same converter that came on that. Uh, it's different from the Con 20. Uh, you know, the Con 20 might be the squeeze converter that you're familiar with. Uh, so let me go ahead and break out all the different versions that we have here. There's the Con 20, which is this squeeze type. There is what I'm calling the cleaning converter, which is still a squeeze type, same size and everything, but the squeeze mechanism is a little, a little bit different. Uh, the Con 50, which is your kind of more typical looking converter, the screw type. And then there's the Con 70, which is uh, the big button filling one that comes on the Custom 74 and the Metal Falcon. Uh, this converter does not fit on this pen, so I will stop talking about it now. Uh, but the three different converters, you know, all fit on this pen. This is the one that comes with it, uh, but it's not available separately. So that's a little bit confusing, but either of these other two will work fine. Oh my gosh, I'm knocking them all over the place. Uh, but let's talk about the ink capacities. I have here the Con 20, the cleaning converter, and the Con 50. And we're gonna go on a little journey here as we go down to look at these ink capacities. Okay. So the Con 20 and the cleaning converter are essentially the same uh, filling. It's about one milliliter, which is honestly pretty darn good ink capacity. And the Con 50 
which is what comes standard on the um, the, the Namiki Falcon and the Pilot Vanishing Point, uh, only has about a half a milliliter, which is your typical cartridge uh, in capacity. But you actually get a much better capacity with the, I'll call it the cheaper cleaning converter that comes with the pen or with the Con 20. So there you go. It's, it's a interesting little phenomenon there. I thought it was worth mentioning. So those are your three different converter options for this pen. Of course, you can also use cartridges as well if you want to do that. Now, this is a wonderful starter pen. I'll show you some of the details here once I can put this thing back together. It's a wonderful starter pen, and I, I would definitely put this in the same class as some of the other starter pens that I typically recommend all the time. Um, it's metal. It's very solidly built. Um, you can see that zigzag pattern in there. It says Pilot Japan on the back, very subtly. Um, it's got kind of a nice tapered little torpedo shape going on there. Um, it is a snap cap and a push to post. Um, it posts snugly. Um, and it's pretty well balanced too uh, while it posts. Here's the grip section and the nib. Now the nib is a similar one to what you're going to see on the Prera and the Plumix. It's got kind of the similar, um, similar situation going on there. So no doubt they have some economies of scale with the production of their nibs. That's part of why they're able to make this pen so affordably. Uh, but uh, the other pens that I typically recommend in this class are like the Platinum Preppy, which you, you know, you've probably seen that all over the place. And Lamy Safari is another one that's very popular that I typically recommend. Um, both great starter pens, you know, for anybody getting into fountain pens, uh, you know, the Preppy is, is only a $4 pen, which is pretty amazing for what you're getting. Um, but it comes with a cartridge and no converter. The converter for a Preppy is like 8 bucks, So it puts you around $12 for the whole setup. Lamy Safari is a little bit more. It's going to put you around 26 for the pen. It doesn't come with a converter. So you're looking just over 30 to get the pen with a converter. Um, but then the advantage you have with the Lamy is that you can pull the nibs off and swap them for all these different sizes. You know, the Preppy comes with fine and medium. The Metropolitan, though, only comes with a medium nib, at least as of the making of this video here in November of 2012. Pilot may uh, decide to bring in more uh, for this pen, uh, more nib sizes. I would love to see that, quite frankly. Um, but as of right now, it's just a medium nib. But the nib tends to run a little bit fine. Now, if you want to expand your nib options a little bit, um, it does fit the Prera and Plumix nibs onto this pen. It's kind of the same setup. Um, the Prera, of course, is a much more expensive pen. It's going to be over $50. So it's probably not worth it to get a Prera just to try to get the nib to put on the Metropolitan because you're paying a lot more uh, for that. But the Plumix, on the other hand, is, you know, a $9 pen, and it has an italic nib on it, or I'll call it a stub nib. It's not a true, like, crisp italic, but I can show you here. The nibs are all identical on these three pens. So there's the Prera Plumix Metropolitan. You can turn them to the side. You can see that the feed design is all very similar as well. And if you want to switch and swap, you can definitely do that once my camera focuses. There we go. You basically just use your thumb and forefinger. You can pull the nib and feed right out of there. You can do the same thing on, say, the Plumix if you want that italic nib. Just place it on the feed, stick it back in, and now I have a Metropolitan with an italic nib. If you get a Metropolitan and a Plumix, the whole getup is only going to cost you $24. So that's pretty awesome, you know, to get basically two pens uh, for $24. But there you go. Um, let me try and put this thing back together. So pretty neat setup there with these three. But it just kind of goes to show that the Metropolitan is really kind of, you know, it's kind of in a class similar to the Prera. I don't know if it's the exact same nib. Uh, it's certainly a similar design uh, in terms of its shape and things like that, and I find that it does write well. Um, the nib imprinting is a little bit different. On the Prera, it says Pilot Super Quality Japan, and then it has the nib size. Now, this one doesn't say Super Quality Japan, so I don't know if that means anything. It says Pilot the size Japan, 
and then it has this tiny little number 512 down here at the bottom. I don't know what that means. And then it's got kind of this etching that's just kind of, I think, a design factor. But the nib shape and everything and the way it writes seems to me to be similar to the Prera. Boy, this thing doesn't want to focus, does it? There we go. <coughs> so let's ink this thing up, take it for a test drive. I got Pilot Orochi Zuku Konpeki. It's one of my favorite inks, um, and it seemed very fitting to use on a Pilot pen. Of course, this ink costs twice as much as the pen, but that to me is not a knock on the ink. That's a compliment to the pen. The way this thing fills is a little different than some of the other pens you might have seen. I've done a lot of videos where I fill with your typical screw type cartridge converter, but this converter is a squeeze type. So basically you have a bladder, a rubber bladder inside here, and you squeeze it together to compress the bladder. And then when you do that, letting it go, it draws a vacuum and brings ink into the pen. That's the basic idea behind it. So when you're filling with this thing, the best way to do it is to you know, open up your ink. Boop. Uh, take your pen and immerse the nib, the entire nib, all the way up to the grip section. It's good to have a paper towel handy um, so that you can be ready to wipe off the excess when you get to that point. Uh, go ahead and just dip the whole thing in there, you know, immerse that entire nib, and then give the converter a good solid squeeze, just like that. And then let it go and give it a second for the bladder to come back up. Did you see that? So give it a good squeeze. Give it a second, bladder comes back up. It's good to do it a couple of times just to make sure that it gets as full as it possibly can because you want to get as much of that one milliliter as possible in there. And one milliliter will write for, gosh, quite a bit. See, I'm just kind of wiping the excess off on paper towel here. Um, one milliliter will write for, gosh, it depends on the ink and the, or sorry, it depends on the, the paper that you use as well as uh, you know, how your writing speed and pressure and things like that, but it'll probably write, gosh, I don't know, 40, 50 pages, something like that. It writes for, for quite a long time on a single fill. So here we go. I got my pen inked up with Konpeki. Let's take it for a little test drive. Okay. The pen does feel very well balanced in my hand. Um, it's, it's not a huge pen, but it's not a small pen either. It's a very very comfortable size, and, and Rachel has much smaller hands, my wife, she has much smaller hands than I do, um, and she finds this pen to be very comfortable as well. So it's one of those magical pens that is both comfortable for her and for me, because we have very different size hands. So, um, got nice inked up here. And one of the most impressive things to me is that um, this Pen, this nib writes so smoothly, especially for a pen in this price range. Let me see if I can get a little better angle here. There we go. Now, of course, I am using it on Rhodia 80 gram dot pad paper, which is very smooth paper, but it still is going is to write. You know, I, I, this is kind of the paper that I standardize all my writing on. It just, it just glides. I mean, honestly, it's, I haven't used a pen in this price range that writes this well in a while, especially one that comes with a converter. I honestly don't know how Pilot does it for, uh, for this price. You know, $15, you're kind of getting the whole package here. And that's why I have absolutely no problem recommending this pen to anyone really anyone at all interested in fountain pens, but especially someone who's new. Because the way that it fills is relatively straightforward. The design is, is very, um, you know, appealing, kind of universally appealing. Uh, the pen writes really nicely, and overall it's just a tremendous value. You know, the nib writes smoothly. It is a medium nib, but it's pilot, so it's a Japanese nib. It's going to write a little bit finer than a, a Lamy medium or, you know, a, a Pelican or something like that, something German or Western. Uh, it's going to write a little bit finer than that. So even though it's a medium nib, it's not a really fat writing medium. It, it leans very much on the fine side. Now, if they came out with a fine in this pen, boy, that would really be exciting. Um, and I'm very much encouraging 
pilot to, to bring that into the U.S., and I hope that they do, but I don't, I don't know of anything at this point. But um, there you have it. That is the Pilot Metropolitan. Uh, I hope that you enjoy it. I know I can say pretty much beyond the shadow of a doubt that this pen is going to become very, very popular um, in the writing community, and I very much look forward to seeing that happen. So that is the Pilot Metropolitan. If you got any questions, you can just post in the comments on YouTube or on Ink Nouveau. Thanks so much for spending time with me today, and write on.